You've probably been hearing a lot about Russian oligarchs and sanctions telling them where they can and can't park their yachts. But you may not know how deep their ties are to some of the fanciest and most elite institutions in the country. Take, for example, Yale University, which despite its more than $42 billion endowment has apparently been eager to take cash and forge connections with Russia's richest men and to admit their children into its highly competitive schools. The oligarchs, of course, welcome these new ways to seed their influence and elevate Russia's stature on the world stage via the Ivy League. At least that is the argument laid out in this article in Airmail, a weekly digital newsletter founded by Graydon Carter, entitled, quote, Yale for Sale. Hungry for money, Yale University took millions from Russian kleptocrats and its management school cut deals with shady Kremlin tied Institute. The article written by journalist and recent Yale grad, uh, Clara Mullo, Mullo, I just asked her how to pronounce her name too, Mullo, lays out how the university courted donations from and sought ties with Russian oligarchs like Mikhail Friedman and Victor Vesel Vexelberg, and makes some stunning allegations like this one, quote, it now appears that the hunger of university officials for the cash of these kleptocrats, especially within its staid school of management, led administrators to knowingly give the Kremlin and Putin's cronies influence over the school and thereby risk its integrity. And this, it's the university's connection to these billionaires that have some faculty questioning the resulting ties to the Moscow School of Management, Skolkovo, a Kremlin-linked institution, seats on Yale boards and the possibility of an outsized influence over the school. Formal partnership with the Moscow School ended in 2019, but its membership in a global network of graduate schools created by Yale only ended almost two weeks after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, Friedman, the oligarch, was just on CBS News arguing against the sanctions and whining about not being able to access his bank accounts because so many of his assets have now been frozen. I wouldn't expect you to tell me on camera, but I would think that a billionaire must have access to money. No, no. Somewhere. There must be a, there must be an account. There must, it must be, a, be, but it's not. <laughs> seems hard to believe. But that's why I'm here. I, that's why I'm here, because I would like to explain sanction against us. Unfair, useless. For what? What did we do wrongly, except we doing business in Russia? Oh. Depending on who you are, enjoy the protections and windfalls of being in the inner circle of madman Vladimir Putin, who, as we speak, continues to murder and commit untold atrocities against the innocent men, women, and children of Ukraine. Now, according to the Airmail article, Friedman's name and that of other oligarchs who sat on Yale boards and councils have been scrubbed by the university. But all of this raises real questions about how deep Russian money goes. By the way, we reached out to Yale for comment on the article's allegations. A spokesperson tells us in part, quote, the piece includes many errors and distortions and says Yale wrote a letter to the editors of Airmail yesterday to describe them. Joining me now is Clara Malo, the author of Yale for Sale and an editor at Airmail. Clara, thanks very much for coming on the show. Appreciate Thank you it. for having me. So I was most interested in your allegation that the Russians, and I guess presumably indirectly Putin, um, may have had significant influence over a university like Yale. What does that mean? Yeah, so... It really stems from the business school at Yale, which is called the School of Management. And it's a connection to a school called Moscow School of Management, Skolkova. Um, it's a Russian school that is essentially funded by the Russian government and by uh, Russian companies that are now all sanctioned. And so my reporting was tracking that connection. And um, like you said, it had only ended about two weeks ago. And so what is happening now with this school? So Yale now has no relationship at all with this Russian school anymore? That's, yes. Apparently. Right. But they had a, a lot of money over the years, right, come in via the oligarchs, et cetera. They haven't given back the money. No, they've not given back <laughs> the money. And um, if anything, they've just removed names. So... Removed the, the Russians' names. They've removed from the, the names from boards, from councils, um, and, you know, it makes it look like there's not that much money, but when you look back at even, like, old Yale uh, Daily News articles or uh, department letters, there's, there's clearly a trace. And we also know that um, a lot of their children, actually, these old children went to Yale. So there is a history of this at Yale. And is there, you know, I assume that there's no evidence, but there's the suggestion that they were helped to get into Yale based on the connections and money that these Russian oligarchs had given to the school. 
You know, I don't know exactly which order um, things happen in, but, but clearly there um, is a lot of money and these people sit on important seats um, in the university and um, their children are on campus. You're a Yale grad. Yes. I, I would assume that Yale was not happy about you writing this story. You know, it's mixed because I think that there's a part of Yale that is, is being self-protective and frankly, I love Yale and I loved my education. And so there's also a part of Yale that like me wants what's, what's best for the school. And I think uh, pushing for a level of transparency is actually best for the community. And some of the feedback I've gotten in, in the past few days have been from, from professors saying, I've experienced this on campus, I've seen this, and um, it's an important story and it's about time the school talks about it. Yeah, it was a really good story, which is why, uh, why we had you on. So thank, thank you very you. much for coming in, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.